In organometallic catalysis, most overall transformations are a series of elementary steps that repeat in different patterns. So it's important to break each of these down and be able to distinguish what exactly is happening in each of those elementary or fundamental steps. The first, and I think the most straightforward example of this, is going to be ligand association And the reverse of that is disassociation. Pardon the spelling. Ligand association and ligand disassociation. And essentially, you can think of this as you have some metal, which is going to always be the case for organometallic chemistry, and a ligand is coming on. So I will just use A to depict that. And a ligand is always going to be a Lewis base, meaning that it's an electron donor. And typically, your metal is going to be your Lewis acid, which is an electron acceptor. So what happens in association is that the ligand just comes on and creates a dative bond with the ligand, with the metal. Conversely, the opposite of that is going to be disassociation, where you have a ligand that just comes off. And when this happens, the oxidation state of the metal remains unchanged in both of these examples, via ligand association or dissociation. What does change, though, is the overall electron change. For association, you are increasing the electron count of the organometallic species by two electrons. During disassociation, you are losing two electrons, so to the overall count you are gaining two electrons via association and losing two electrons via disassociation. Another common type of organometallic elementary step is going to be oxidative addition. And the reverse of that is called reductive elimination. Now, as the names imply, the oxidation state is going to change via both of these pathways. For oxidative addition, the oxidation state will increase by 2. And for reductive elimination, the oxidation state will reduce by 2. So oxidative addition, you can think of it as your organometallic species interacting with something that has a bond that can be inserted into. Okay, So you have some bond could be... H2 gas, could be an aryl halide, an alkyl halide, anything that that metal can effectively insert itself into. And upon oxidative addition, you have now created two brand new bonds to the metal. And if the oxidation state was zero, it has now become two plus. So you are increasing the oxidation state by two. You're also increasing the overall electron count by two electrons. The microscopic reverse of this is reductive elimination. And reductive elimination is really important because it actually is typically going to be the new bond forming reaction in your overall catalytic species. So in this case, what is happening is that you are reducing and eliminating those two new ligands. And when you do so, you are reducing the oxidation state, like if it was two plus, it becomes zero. And you are creating a new bond between those two ligand species. The third reaction class for organometallic reactions is insertion and the microscopic reverse elimination. What you can assume with insertion is that you have a ligand, two types of ligands, where they are inserting into one another from the metal. And we can think of this as a metal that has those two ligands that subsequently becomes a ligand that now has both components migrated into one another. In fact, you'll often hear this referred to as migratory insertion because one of the ligands, in this case B, is migrating over to being attached to A. A common example of this is very similar to what you learned in organic chemistry with hydride shifts or alkyl shifts or aryl shifts. This occurs via an insertion pathway, where again, one of the ligand structures is inserting into the other ligand. The microscopic reverse of this is called elimination. 
So let's assume that you had instead a scenario like this where you have a single ligand on the metal and what happens is a piece of that is removed and attached to the metal where now you end up having two new ligands whereas you started with one. A common example of this is beta hydride elimination. Oftentimes metals that are attached to alkyl groups notice that there are several hydrogens on this alkyl group and an example of beta hydride elimination is going to be when the, one of these hydrogens gets eliminated as the name implies to being on the metal and generating a new alkene. So oftentimes beta hydride elimination is going to produce a new type of double bond. Substitution and transmetallation is the final class and these are often used, these terms are interchangeable, these are not actually reverses of one another and we can think of this as having two different types of metals in your reaction system. So I'll call one M1 and one will be M2 and they will do a ligand exchange wherein now metal one is going to be attached to ligand B and metal two is going to be attached to metal A. Now I'm going to present to you a few different catalytic cycles and I'd like for you to identify in the boxes which of these reaction classes or elementary steps that we've just talked about correspond to those reactions that are taking place in the following catalytic cycle. For this transformation, the overall reaction of some metal supported by a ligand, by the way L subscript N is just to indicate that there's some number of ligands attached to the metal, is reacting with a second metal that has some R group on it and some R group that has a halide on it. That's what the X means. Okay, and overall, this is generating a brand new carbon carbon bond. Okay, that is the overall transformation of this catalytic cycle. And it occurs via three fundamental elementary steps. The first step is oxidative addition. So, oxidative addition which I'll abbreviate oxadin, oxidative addition is occurring in this very first step where you have some ligand where the metal is effectively inserting into that bond and you end up with two brand new ligands on the metal. Now if our oxidation state of our metal was initially zero, upon oxidative addition, the oxidation state of that metal has now become two plus. If it were one, it has now become three plus. If it were two, it would have then become four plus. So the oxidation state has changed by two. In addition, the total number of electrons has also increased by two. The next step, we see a second metal is coming and exchanging ligands for one of the ligands on the original metal. This is called transmetallation. Transmetallation. And sometimes you see this as nucleophilic displacement or substitution. But in our class, we'll refer to this largely as transmetallation where one metal is transferring ligands with the other metal. This has no impact on the oxidation state, so if it were two before, it is still two currently. And it also has no impact on the overall electron count, so the electron count remains unchanged. The final step, and in fact this is our product forming step, as is often the case, is called reductive red elimination which I'll just put red LM, reductive elimination. This generates a new bond between two ligand species where neither of which end up on the original metal organometallic complex. And this thus regenerates our active species. And in fact, this is why catalysis is so useful because you don't need very much metal to produce a tremendous amount of your product. Okay, so this is one of the reasons that organometallic catalysis is so important to the world. So during this step, the oxidation state, as the name implies, is being reduced by two electrons. Additionally, the total electron count is going down by two upon losing these two ligands. And importantly, 
Carbon-carbon bonds are often formed this way in organometallic catalysis via the final step, which is reductive elimination. Now let's try one more example. This catalytic cycle is actually really important. It is one of the ways that, industrially speaking, we reduce alkenes to alkanes. All that is transpiring overall in this reaction is that an alkene plus hydrogen gas is reacting with some rhodium, uh, rhodium catalyst to generate a reduced species alkane. And the first step that actually occurs in this reaction, uh, I didn't ask you for, but it is just ligand dissociation followed by association of a ligand, and in this case, sol is meant to indicate solvent. Solvent, just like an L-type ligand, is a two-electron donor, um, and it doesn't contribute anything to the oxidation state. So that's the first step, the dissociation of the ligand being replaced by association of the solvent, and then the reverse of that would just be the dissociation of the solvent followed by the association of the ligand. And oftentimes you'll see in, in organometallic chemistry that this first activation step has to occur before the active metal species can enter the catalytic cycle. And any deviation outside of the catalytic cycle will prevent this transformation from occurring, just as a heads up. So the first step that I did ask you about is this first one, where H2 is coming in, rhodium is effectively inserting itself into that HH uh, sigma bond, and we create this brand new species. So this step is called oxidative addition. Oxidative addition is the first step that's occurring. The next step that's occurring is the solvent is coming off, so that's ligand dissociation, followed by association, so ligand association of the alkene. Okay, so anytime the ligand association happens, you increase the overall electron count by two, and you don't do anything to the oxidation state. The next step that is occurring is doesn't have anything coming in or out. So we know that it's not going to be ligand dissociation or dissociation. We know that it's not going to be oxidative addition or reductive elimination. We also know that it's not going to be transmetallation because you don't have another metal coming and changing out ligands. Which means that anytime that happens, if a step occurs where nothing had to come on or off, that's always going to either be beta hydride elimination or, in this case, migratory insertion. So migratory insertion is the step that's occurring here, where one of the hydrides is actually inserting into the alkane to generate this, the alkene to generate this new alkane. And then subsequently what happens is association via the solvent. So at this point, you've generated the brand new alkane that is attached to rhodium. And we see that there is a hydrogen here that is going to move to that alkane to generate our final product or make that new bond. So this step is called reductive elimination. Reductive elimination is the final step. And this step, as always, regenerates your active catalytic species with which it can continue throughout the catalyt catalytic cycle over and over again. Now I would like to walk through the electron count and the oxidation state of this metal species throughout the entire catalytic cycle because it's something that I'm gonna expect from you as well. We know that Cl is an X-type ligand. All the other ligands on this species, one, are L-type ligands. Okay, so that means that the, the oxidation state of rhodium is going to be one. So this is oxidation state of one. And it's important to be able to identify the first species because then we can just track uh, throughout this cycle because oftentimes the electron count and the oxidation state is going to change by two. So that's why I always start with the active catalytic uh, species to begin with. We can also determine the overall electron count. So we said that solvent is an L-type ligand. That means there are three L-type ligands on this species for six electrons. We have one X-type ligand, which is going to be one electron. And then rhodium is the ninth element on the third, fourth row of the periodic table, which means that rhodium has nine electrons. So this means that this species is a 16 electron species, which is a D8 metal, which is square planar, which we know is a very stable electron configuration, even though it doesn't satisfy the uh, 18 electron rule. From there, oxidative addition occurs. And as the name implies, the oxidation state is going to change by two. So without even doing any of our electron counting, I know that this species is going to have an oxidation state of three. 
So let me make that a little more clear. An oxidation state of 3, which I'll indicate with the Roman numeral 3. And I know this because oxidative addition increases the oxidation state by 2. So at this point, I also know that oxidative addition increases the electron count by 2, which means that this is going to be in an 18 electron species. And I didn't have to do any of our counting formalism to get there, but I can just to prove it. So at this point, we have two hydrides and a chloride, which are all X-type ligands. So I have three X-type ligands for three electrons. I still have three L-type ligands from the two L's in the solvent. So three L's is going to give me six electrons. And then rhodium is still nine electrons, which means that I have nine plus three is 12, plus six is 18. But notice that after I've identified it for the first one, by knowing what's happening to the electron count and the oxidation state after every reaction, I don't have to do this every time. But I can in order to check my work. The next step is going to be ligand association, so it just replaced the solvent. So nothing, in fact, changed about the oxidation state nor the overall electron count. So this is still rhodium-3, and it is still 18 electrons. The next step is migratory insertion. Now, importantly, migratory insertion has absolutely no impact on the electron count or what is happening with the oxidation state. Notice that you were replacing an L-type ligand for another L-type ligand. Here was an X-type ligand and another X-type ligand. So nothing about the oxidation state has changed, and nothing about the electron count has changed. This means that overall, this is still a rhodium-3 species, and it is still 18 electrons, so still a stable species. So the next step is going to be what is called reductive elimination. And as the name implies, this is going to reduce the oxidation state by 2, which it does, and it is also going to reduce the overall electron count by 2, which it does. And we can confirm this by doing our electron counting formalism. Hydride and alkane and chloride are all X-type ligands, so we still have three X-type ligands. We still have rhodium, which is nine electrons, and we still have two L's and an solvent, which is also an L, so we, now we have three L's, which is six electrons. Nine plus three is 12, plus six is 18. And this is something that as we move through to looking at more catalytic cycles, you should get in the habit of doing and expect to do on your exam.